Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would like to give a quick thanks to our Tier 5 channel members and patrons. Fallen Angel, Buzz Killington. Thank you again. Now on to the story. Story number one. Reigniting their art of war. Humans, a strange species to be sure, but rather welcome when they finally mastered the art of faster than light travel. When humans broke into the scene, young ones, there was much that they had wished to learn and share with the Alliance. Though many of us still thought of them as young and reckless species. The Primorians thought them to be primitive and an inferior species, but respected them nonetheless. On the opposite end, the Alveri took to them like a fire to tinder. They were ecstatic, learning all they could from our humans. As far as the Droshkin, we saw their history and saw how far they truly came. From wars that our races never could have imagined to the prosperous and peace-loving civilization that we met. These were much simpler and easy times as we helped them take their first steps into the galaxy. Humans were never the strongest, nor the fastest, or even the smartest. The one thing that they did better than all of us was a jar. They had such a thirst for knowledge and adventure that it was everything that we could do to stop them from overexerting themselves. For we feared for their somewhat fragile species. How woefully ignorant we were of their capabilities at the time. Not long after the humans joined the rest of the galaxy, a scourge had descended upon the galaxy. The Metek Vena Imperium came as conquerors, set on enslaving all in sight. They were bloodthirsty and vicious. They devastated the outer colonies in mere cycles. The war had seemed to last aeons. The Alliance, barring the humans, set about mobilizing the greatest ships, the strongest warriors, to beat back the brutal foe. We forced the humans to stand back, as they were not versed in space combat as the rest of the Alliance. When our Grand Fleet met the Imperium, it was a massacre that we were forced to retreat. Their tactics were swift and devastating, their weapons powerful and precise. Barely three cycles had passed before we retreated, after which the Imperium made its fatal error. It had attacked the few human colonies that resided in the Fondoran Cluster. When this news reached the Alliance, we all turned to see the humans' reaction. What we saw was not the peaceful race that we had met. No, we saw their ambassadors as they set their gaze forward. The fire burning in their eyes. The chill we felt that day was unlike any other. Colder than a vacuum of space, with a hidden fury that burned hotter than a thousand suns. What came next was a shock, to be frank. The Imperium was at our doorstep. We put up our defenses and rallied our troops, loaded our ships for supposed last stand. The humans were nowhere to be found. We believed that they had abandoned us, until they came back with a retribution as their spear. Hundreds, if not thousands, of their ships dropped out of the light speed, grand flagships leading the charge. Frigates and destroyers adorned with the finest armaments that humanity could offer. The coming battle would resound through history for the rest of eternity. And the human ships flew gallantly into battle, matching the Imperium's brutality and vicious attacks with certain elegance that we had thought humans did not possess. Carving a scathing wound in the Imperium fleet, forcing them to retreat. Humanity, this young, brash race, had come to our rescue. What would come next would make a victory short-lived. The Imperium had set its sights on the cradle 
of humanity. Terra, or as the humans named it, Earth. Knowing what was the come, humanity did the unthinkable. They evacuated their home, leaving just enough behind to lure the enemy in. Once the non-combatants cleared the solar system, they took two-thirds of their mighty fleets and entrapped the Imperium, setting off a chain reaction of electromagnetic charges to disable both fleets, both from the humans' own reactor cores. They had put a plan into motion, knowing that the entire Imperium's fleets and might would be upon them. They would move most of humanity aside from the brave souls who volunteered to stay, to complete the trap and then once they were safe, destroy their solar system by detonating the core of their very own star. In one breath, it was gone. Their home, the Imperium, and most of their mighty fleet. The scourge having passed, we would have celebrated if not for the traumatic sight that we had witnessed. The human, now drifters of the cosmos, lost their home. We couldn't understand why at the time, but when we asked, they told us as a collective whole. We did it because we are just taking our first steps into the galaxy. We didn't have much to lose where you did, so we chose the future of this alliance and preservation of humanity. We sacrificed our home to begin a new chapter. Humans, we learned a valuable lesson from them. We learn not to underestimate them. We learned that despite their chapter of peace, the art of war still flowed through their veins. The Imperium paid the price for reigniting that part of their history. It served as a warning to all who would dare. That day, the Alliance vowed to never let a human be turned away. That we would never allow them to starve, remain ill, or be denied shelter, that no matter where they roamed from this point on, they would be welcomed with open arms. That, my young ones, is the story and history of the first and only galactic war. So, remember, when you see a human, never turn them away, and never underestimate their will to endure. End of story. Story number two, Humanity's Rage, written by Ayit Humans. From Humanity's Declaration of War Against the Galaxy, Terran Empire Archives. We are at war with the galaxy and all of its denizens. We were welcomed to the galactic stage with open arms. As any guest should, we respected the laws of hospitality. When they first saw us, the aliens proclaimed us magnificent, beautiful, and most graceful species to ever live. We were flattered and tried to compliment them in return. Zeno de Lenda est. We got along well, we thought. We found them to be about equivalent in all regards to society, except for one. Slavery was never abolished in any of the other societies. Only humans had declared the practice barbaric and crude. We immediately started to push for the abolition of slavery. We were diplomatic and understood it will take a while for all slaves to be freed, and the movement to gain any traction. We first had to make a name for ourselves. Zeno de Lenda est. We found out a darker truth. The slaves were not for manual labor. No, they were for pleasure. This disgusted us. We became adamant about this. We had made it one of our core doctrines in diplomacy. We would not trade until the slaves were free. We set up an organization, the UGR, or Underground Railroad. Its purpose was to free slaves get them set up for success, and push for the abolishment of slavery. They also acted as investigators so that we can get an accurate picture of the logistics of the operation. And they discovered an awful fact. Zeno de Lenda est. Humans, 
Humans had been taken as slaves for pleasure. We all but exploded with rage, but cooler heads prevailed. We wrote a document, the undeniable rights of sapiens. We told the Galaxy Senate that this document will be put in place, or all humans will leave the galactic stage forevermore. With our peace said, we left, hoping to leave an impact. Zeno de Linda asked. And then news came. Children. Children. Our children had been taken as slaves, not as manual labor, as is the norm for humans in the past, but as pleasure slaves. With this, there is no other course but war. A war more total and more devastating than any they had seen before. In our ignorance, no, in our arrogance, we thought our days of war were over. But they had just been a warmer. This, this will be the death war. Only one side will come out on top. And we are furious. Zeno, the lender asked. We thought by being kind, considerate and respectful, there would be peace. No more war. No more suffering. But this made the aliens think us as weak. They do not look at our past because they think us pacifists. But we are not. They evolved at the top of the food chain every single other species. Struggle is not inherent in their species, in their DNA. Humans fought, killed, and endured until we were the top of the food chain. It is time to show them that the lack of desire to fight was not because of laziness or weakness, but knowledge of the consequences of what will happen if a war consumed an entire species. Our ghosts, our past traumas, and the atrocities shaped us, molded us, we are made for war. We got so good at it that we stopped. Because every war as we did in the past, there will be no more humans. I say we turn the engines of war back on. Let them tremble as humanity awakens. They hurt us, abused us, and we will repay this a million times over. Zeno de Lender Est. I ask you, my brothers and sisters, my cousins and aunts and uncles and more. Do you support us? Do you support the war for humanity's freedom? Because if you do, then we will march. Zeno, the lender, est. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.